Hello, we're in Malta, and we have today a Maltese topped table. The disc of marble is Pietra Dura, which is like a specimen table in that it is showing different coloured marbles and they've been stuck onto a so either a cement or a slate bottom or a marble bottom. Uh, it's possible they were countersunk, uh, but it's more likely all of it has been applied to a single piece underneath. Uh, often nowadays they just grind them, but grind down from the base material and they would usually use the white as the starting point. So we have Pietro Dura table, inlaid marble table, and everyone wants it to be Darmanin, Dar Darmanin, the Maltese company who made many wonderful tables for royalty. Queen Adelaide, in particular, took a lot of stuff back to England in the 1840s, I think, from memory. Certainly ordered it when she was here, and it was either taken back with her or sent along. But they only would have sent the marble section. And what happened here is some, somebody had this piece of marble sent to England, because I bought this in England earlier in the year, had it brought to Malta, and the owner of the marble disc um, had a cabinet maker make the stand. So the stand is walnut, and it has a very interesting frame top, which holds tight the marble section you can see underneath. It's rock solid. And while we have it upside down, I'll show you that this item's got four original brass casters, which are countersunk and hidden inside the lion paw claw feet. So they're an extremely heavy thing, extremely well made. I'll go over one more time. A Maltese marble top. It is not marked Dormanin, though I hope it is, and it probably is. We have a English made walnut table base. Walnut is a tree that grows profusely in England. Not, it's not a rare wood at all. And it's a huge quick, quick growing tree, people, people misunderstand it. And because this has a platform base, I would put that as 1845, could be a little bit later. Could, could be nudging towards the Regency, but I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's Regency quite. It's a lovely solid piece of mahogany with this beautiful carving and these, these, these lovely feet as we discussed. So while we're, while we're talking marble tables and Malta, we have the book from Manduka titled Antique Furniture in Malta, John Manduka, and on page 223 there is a marble table made by an unknown maker, doesn't attribute it to anyone, and it shows an earlier table than this one. This one's 1840-ish, this one is 18th century, but it shows that it is a design which was used in Malta, the colourway is very similar. This features a local marble called Zonkor, I don't know whether this has any local marble in it. My, my belief is when they were doing stone floors in villas and staircases in villas and the tombstones in the churches, the, the uh, stone masons, once they've cut up the primary pieces, would have bits left. And these bits would have provided some of the material for these tables. I think that's what's happened. I, don't, I might be wrong. I think that's what's happened. I don't know where this is from. I think the, the raw materials like to be from Italy. On the whole, these are so much money. They're so expensive. It's horrendous. But if you want to buy one of the Maltese cross, you will get the opportunity to buy one once every five to ten years. This is a good one. It's unrestored. It's all original. There is a crack here, which is shrinkage, where it's, it is separated, but it hasn't kinked. And that means it can be filled and coloured, or it can be filled with timber and matched very easily. And there was no need for it to be taken to pieces 
which would be difficult, it can be very easily fixed. One of the casters on the table is loose, but it doesn't need any work particularly. We all seem to roll, it works very well. Um, in England, the market is strong and uh, it very much depends on who, who, who wants to buy them on the day. If they are incised or labelled Dormammin, then they, they do fetch higher prices. And that firm was making the, these tables similar to this, not the same design, similar into the 20th century. And even the late tables by that company are hugely expensive. Of course, difficult to ship because they're expensive. This is a Nashar for sale. Um, I think that it can be left alone. If someone wants to restore it, they will get some good colours out of this, this walnut without too much difficulty. And indeed, waxing the top will bring some more colour out of the marble. Thanks very much for, look, for looking.